Hey yo, what is going on viewers of the tube? My name is Tyler and welcome to the channel that cannot wait to ring in 2020. But my friends, those shat coins are going to be looking for a New Year's Eve kiss. Do like this. And retreat. You know our smooches. It's time for Chico Crypto. And just like that, Bitcoin gets rejected from a critical resistance point. Pulling out the price chart since Christmas, Bitcoin was hugging the 7.2K mark, but then on the 26th, it tested 7.4K resistance before getting rejected. Then a steady climb back up to 7.4K resistance in just two days. And by the 28th, we smashed through it. This turned it into a key support. Although bullish momentum started to fade as we tested 7.5k resistance the next day on the 29th, which was tested two more times before falling back down to the support. But as of yesterday, we fell back through 7.4k. And it looks what I predicted on my live stream is going to come true once more. Bitcoin is going to go down into the 6k range. Now, hang on the 7.2k, 7.3k support is important. But if by the time this video comes out, we are under, the 6K levels are pretty much guaranteed. Now, I don't wanna keep repeating why the 6K level will be hit. I talked about it in my live and I have many videos on why. Mining fundamentals and Chinese control and how we have barely been in this range and it's similar to Bitcoin's $200 to $300 range throughout 2014 and 2015. All of those videos are in the description if you wanna check them out. So Chico predicts 6K levels to ring in the new year, but how long is it gonna stay in that range and what will the rest of the first year of the Roaring Twenties part do look like for Bitcoin? Well, let's begin with the 6K levels. And here's a great image which shows the support zone between 6K to 7K. We hung in the zone for about six months before the dip down into the 3K range in December of 2018. And then after that hash war dip, we blew right back through it, not hanging in that support zone for barely any time. Now, this image was taken back on November 22nd. Well, today is almost the end of December. During this time, the price dipped into the zone once more on the 24th, but immediately jumped past the upper limits, hitting 7.8K. The price deflated down and 7.2K, the upper limit of the zone, has been hugged like a black bear until December 16th, going back into the zone for two days until the 18th. And the rest is history, hanging onto the upper level near 7.2K. So total overall time in this low support zone, aka major accumulation, makes me think we will enter it a few more times. Total time since is literally less than six months. Now, if we make a comparison to the 2013 bubble and preceding bear market, this $200 to $300 range was the cycle support or accumulation zone. Just like the 6K to 7K range in late 2017, we blew right through the $200 and then $300 mark in late 2013. And then the price deflated, entering the support zone beginning on January of 2015 and stayed there until late October of the same year, 10 months in that zone. Six months this cycle versus 10 months last cycle. This observation, combined with the mining fundamentals, make me think we have more time in this range. From the beginning of the year up until February, we will fall, possibly even touching 5.9K in the middle of the month. This will be the capitulation phase of the last mini 14K bull run. But by the end of February, the uptrend will have already started from the low up to the upper limits of the range, even back to where we were yesterday, 7.2K. Although I personally don't think it will be the exact same as the last cycle, 10 months in the support and accumulation zone. I see eight months this cycle, and by the end of February, the uptrend back to 10K begins. Why in 2.5 months, the third Bitcoin halving event takes place and minor rewards are slashed in half once again. Now, many people don't realize there is currently a minor war going on. The price is being pushed down to the 6K levels by the miners as an economic weapon to accumulate. This is the miners' last chance to get 12.5 BTC per block. Come May 14th, it's only 6.25 BTC per block. Chinese miners and some other regions can sustain their operations at the 6K to 7K level with 12.5 BTC per block. But when the reward gets slashed, they become unprofitable. 
This is why I predict a price between 10K to 11.5K on the day of the event. Over 65% of the miners need the price to be at that level to be profitable businesses. And that is why if you look at the current hash rate, it has gone sideways. Up by 20% in hash rate one day, and then down by 20% in hash rate the next. It's basically the miner shakeout. In the last couple of months, new mining technology has entered the markets. Going to ASICminerValue.com and sorting by the hashing algos and scrolling down to SHA-256, we can see the top Bitcoin miners. The Bitmain S17 Plus, which was released this month, provides the highest profitability, $2.28 per day. And this is given a 12 cent kilowatt hour, the average rate in the US. And scrolling down the list, you can see only a small fraction of the most recent miners are profitable within the US and other relevant non-Chinese regions, while a majority of the older machines are negative and plain out losing money. Now in June of 2019, this year, it was found out that the average electricity cost in China was just 7.8 cents. Let's just see what happens by putting in their rate. The S17 Plus is getting them over $5 per day per machine, while older machines are still highly profitable, only going into the negatives with the first gen S11s and the last gen S9s. But after the halving into the second half of 2020, what will happen to Bitcoin's price? Will BTC keep pushing up and will we break the old all-time high of 20k by the end of the year? Well, this one is much tougher to call because come January 1st, the derivatives market for cryptocurrency is going to become that much more robust. What do I mean? Futures on the regulated side. CME Bitcoin futures, backed and now Eris X. On December 9th, back quietly went the way of the dark side with cash settled futures and options contracts. They announced the launch of the first regulated option contract for Bitcoin futures. Looking into it, you see how ugly it is. Price discovery occurs completely within a federally regulated market and has no exposure to unregulated Bitcoin spot markets. WTF and below their cash settled ones, which don't settle at all in Bitcoin and are the exact same as CME futures. A way to bet on the price of Bitcoin without having any skin in the game. And now backed volume is surging, hitting its highest mark on December 18th. After the launch of these products, the salt with expanding products is coming strong, not only from back. CME, the leader in regulated futures volume by a long shot, is launching their own options contracts on January 13th. And Eris X finally getting their toes wet, launching their physically settled contracts on December 17th. Going to their website, they are much different than CME and Backed. CME order size is minimum 5 BTC, Backed is 1 BTC, Eris X is 0.1 BTC. But just like Bax's physically settled contracts, details of custody, withdrawals, and getting Bitcoin back to your own wallet is pretty much non-existent. And just like both Bax and CME, they are providing a market maker program where they pay large institutional traders to batter the Bitcoin price. But these regulated futures contracts, they need the time to be built and get going. They don't just automatically get volume. Their regulated assault only musters up 500 million, sometimes towards a billion of 24 hour volume, combined of everything. And just going to CoinGecko, we can see 24 hour trading volume from the unregulated side. It was 46 billion yesterday. Literally between 1 to 2% of the total volume is from regulated not enough to stop it throughout the beginning of the year. But just look at derivative volume on CoinGecko. Yesterday it was 9.5 billion, or 20% of the total volume. This is crypto fans being suckered into helping out CME, backed, and the powers that be, betting against our only chance at breaking free from the financial chains of old. That is why I call on all the derivative exchanges listed, BitMEX, OKX, Bybit, Binance, Deribit, Kraken, FTX, and more to abide by the proof of keys event and show the world you are not compliant in the destruction of Bitcoin's price. January 3rd is proof of keys, and let's ring in the new year by showing people proof of your reserves. 
and you will not contribute to the rehypothecation of our future. I don't expect many of these exchanges to comply because they don't have the reserves. And this fact makes me scared for what will come once the regulated options and contracts get their footing. They will have a partner in the unregulated world with downward price pressure. I'm hoping for a 20k all-time high smash through by the end of 2020, but the derivative fight will only increase. That is why I predict slower movements upwards compared with the past. And by the end of 2020, we will be back to 14k. Cheers viewers. I'll see you next time.